This is one of the best premium laptops with the Ryzen 9 7940 HS and an RTX 4070 with upgradable RAM. This is a 14 inch laptop where you can upgrade both RAM sticks. Absolutely incredible. You turn over the laptop and pull off the bottom cover. You can see that you have access to both RAM sticks and you have access to one upgradable SSD. There's not two slots, there's only one slot, but the fact that this 14 inch laptop, you can upgrade both RAM sticks is very rare because both the ASUS Zephyr is G14 and the X13 from ASUS are not upgradable for both RAM sticks. In fact, the X13, you can't even upgrade any of them with the G14, you upgrade one. I'll do full head to head reviews between those two laptops, but right now let's stay focused on the Razer Blade 14. As you can see, this laptop is pretty heavy for a 14 inch laptop. It's over four pounds and it's 0 0.07 inches thick. So it's not exactly a thin and light laptop. And one thing that kind of drives me a little bit crazy about it is the amount of fingerprints you can put on this laptop. I mean, I wiped it before I started the video and already it's like wows us. The bottom cover of this laptop is fit very nicely into the side panels. Definitely one of the highlights of this laptop is the all aluminum, well-built, well put together chassis. It is beautiful. Now we do have some nice vents here along the bottom with access to the heat pipes as well. So there's little vents for the heat pipes and for the fans. So vent along the back and no vents along the sides but they do a great job ventilating this laptop and we'll check out the performance later in the video. Now, as far as ports are concerned, we have a Kensington lock, HDMI, USB type A, and a USB type C. On the other side, we have our power adapter, USB type A, USB C, and headphone jack. So kind of a minimal connectivity, no SD card readers, no micro SD card readers, keeps things simple. Now going ahead and taking a look at the open and close test, opens and closes easily with one hand, a little bit of a slide there when I first attempted, but from there, opens very nicely. A nice rigid top cover, not a lot of screen flex, and of course, the hinge is very nice. It doesn't have a lot of bounce when you're opening and closing the hinge. Taking a look at the interior of the laptop, this is where things get very, very wonderful. We have really clean keyboard. Love the keyboard, it snaps back very nice. It's a medium key travel. We have speakers on each side of the keyboard deck, creating a great audio experience. Here's a quick sample so you can hear what it sounds like. And of course, there is a webcam on the top bezel of the screen. Here's a sample of that webcam. This is the webcam on the Razer Blade 14 2023 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And let me tell you, this trackpad is amazing. A large glass trackpad assembled very well to the chassis, quiet, dampened click. It's so satisfying to use, very easy to navigate while you're working inside of this laptop. Here's a sample of using both the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what they sound like. I would say the one odd downside to the laptop keyboard is going to be this weird small backspace key. Normally this is almost the same size as the enter or shift key, but you can see these keys have been made quite a bit smaller. And so I tend to accidentally hit the plus key sometimes when I'm typing. So that took a little bit to get used to getting all the way over to grab that backspace key. So a little cork, just wanted to point that out. Now the screen on this laptop is great. It has a 240 Hertz refresh rate. It's a QHD screen. The resolution is 2,560 by 1600, reaches 544 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 90% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 0 0.84. Can't get over the fingerprints. That is just, man. That's crazy. I guess, I mean, I have pretty oily fingers, but that's just so much fingerprinting. That's nuts. Now, speaking of the brightness, the battery life on this laptop is good. It isn't as great as I would hope for the Ryzen 9 7940 HS CPU because you're not able to turn off the dedicated GPU. That would have helped a lot in conserving power. We still got eight hours and 43 minutes on pass mark productivity, eight hours and 21 minutes on stream video playback, five hours on Photoshop, and two hours and 55 minutes on video editing. But I think we could have gotten maybe 30 minutes to an hour longer if we were able to turn off that dedicated GPU. But all things considered, it has solid battery life and great screen capability. 
capabilities. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, this laptop is not cheap. At the check of this video, it was pricing in at around $2,699, but there might be some sales running right now. So definitely head down into the description below and click those links. Keep in mind, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, let's go ahead and jump into the performance benchmark for this laptop to see what it is capable of. Taking a look at Geekbench single core and multi-core, you can see that we have good mid-range scores for this laptop for single core and pretty solid mid-range for multi-core. However, we drop down a little bit on the list for multi-core compared to some of the other processors, especially when looking compared to Intel, because Intel has definitely increased their cores and threads over this past year, where Ryzen has kept the same eight core, 16 thread processor. Looking at Cinebench R23, we have decent single core performance and decent multi-core performance. However, luckily, life is not made up of simulated benchmarks, so let's get into the real world tests and see what this laptop is capable of inside of something like Photoshop and After Effects. For Photoshop, you can see we score a 968, a very respectable score for this laptop, and especially that this is 16 gigs of RAM and it's upgradable to 32 gigs or even 64 gigs. So if you were to upgrade this laptop to 32 gigs of RAM, we would easily see in the 1000s to 1100s inside of Photoshop, which would give you substantially smoother performance if you're a big, heavy Photoshop user. Now looking at After Effects, we saw a good score at 868. I would love to see this laptop at 900, and I think if we had 32 gigs of RAM, we'd move the needle up a little bit to get us into that 900 range where we have a really smooth experience for After Effects. 868 is still gonna be great. You're gonna have good performance, but you might find a little bit of lagginess in some of those more robust tasks that you're doing inside of After Effects. Taking a look at Blender Classroom, this RTX 4070 does not disappoint at a 1,071 great score, especially up against the other RTX 4070s. Like I said, don't trust simulated benchmarks all the time because once you get into more of these real world tests, you're like, wow, this laptop is actually very capable. Autodesk 3DS Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo, all good scores floating right around the other results of these RTX 4070s. It has no problem hanging around with its fellow counterpart laptops or its peers, I should say. Um, and then as we get into SolidWorks, still a good score. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that SolidWorks prefers workstation GPUs over GeForce gaming GPUs. And so this is a good score for SolidWorks, but if you're really a big SolidWorks user, you wanna get into something like an A2000, A3000, or A5000 from NVIDIA, or you wanna use a Radeon GPU like the RX 6700S or the 6800S, those work much better in SolidWorks. So that'll give you better performance if you're a big user in that program. Now looking at the drop frames in Premiere Pro, 6K B-RAW and 6K RED footage had great results. 86 drop frames for B-RAW, 201 for red footage, that's out of 16,177 in the project. Now looking at the 4K export time, this is a nine minute clip placed into Premiere Pro and then export it out at full quality YouTube settings. And we score a two minute and 45 second export time for 4K. And then for 6K, 17 minutes and 31 seconds. Respectable, but not getting my award for the best export time here on the channel. That's gonna go to the Lenovo Legion Pro 7i with an i9-13900HX and a RTX 4070 GPU at 11 minutes and 43 seconds. So about seven minutes behind that. Um, take that for what it is. Still good. Not great though. Not great. Not the best we've seen on the channel. Now moving on to DaVinci Resolve, a good score, five minutes and 36 second export time with one of the best being around the three minute and 51 seconds. So it's it's within range. It's not something you know that takes extravagantly a long time to export, but DaVinci Resolve tends to be a little bit slower than Premiere Pro as far as the export times are concerned. Now, for me personally, I think this laptop is great quality. It's a beautiful build, has a great screen. It just is on the more expensive side. So if you're a big Windows fanboy or a fan girl, and you wanna really have that strong Mac aesthetic with great speakers, a really nice large trackpad, and a great keyboard deck, this is a great laptop. But there's other laptops that are more affordable that get just as good a performance. And you'll definitely wanna check out the other videos I have when I'm comparing the Razer Blade to some of those options. So links in the description though, if you are ready to make a purchase and this is the laptop for you, otherwise click or tap the screen here for more laptops to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.